Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back. In this video, the battle between real and nominal GDP. Which one will come out on top? Stick around to find out and smash that like button in the meantime. Okay, so you already know that GDP is the big daddy of all macro measures, and hopefully you remember how to calculate it. Y equals, I'll give you a second, okay, say it with me, Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. Awesome. And we know that GDP represents total spending in an economy. Great. So far, so good. But now we're going to distinguish between two types of GDP, real and nominal. And I'm going to use this opportunity to distinguish between real and nominal variables more broadly, because we can apply those terms to all sorts of things like GDP, wages, income, and interest rates. Let's start with nominal variables, because this is how we express these numbers in day-to-day -day life. For example, if you have a job and get paid $12 an hour, that's your nominal wage. If you earned $120 in your last paycheck, that's your nominal income. If you borrow money for a new car and the interest rate is 5%, that's a nominal interest rate. In other words, nominal variables are constantly around us at all times. Yet, for economists, Nominal variables aren't particularly useful because they're missing a very important piece of context, changes in the price level. We've already learned about inflation and how it reduces purchasing power or the value of our money, so this might make sense already. Think about it. What if I offer you a job for $100 an hour, but that's the only information you have? That might sound good, but if you don't know the price level, you really can't tell if that's a lot of money or not. What if a loaf of bread is $50? Well, that nominal wage doesn't sound so appealing anymore, does it? And this is where real variables come in. Real variables control for changes in the price level, whereas nominal variables are expressed using prices of that year. For example, real wage equals the nominal wage divided by the price level times 100. So if the price level was 150 and you're earning a nominal wage of $15, your real wage was $10. This indicates the actual purchasing power of your wage and allows us to make comparisons across time, which we wouldn't be able to do with nominal variables. Similarly, real income equals nominal income divided by the price level times 100. So if the price level was 120, your nominal income was $24,000, your real income was $20,000. Now, real interest rates are a little bit different. The real interest rate equals the nominal interest rate minus the expected inflation rate. Now, we'll learn about this again in Unit 4, don't worry, but for now, if we have an expected inflation rate of 4%, the nominal interest rate is 5%. So, 5 minus 4 equals a real interest rate of 1%. Now, the main nominal and real variables this module is concerned with are nominal and real GDP. The idea is pretty much the same as what we've already done, but let's be specific. Nominal GDP is a measure of how much is spent on output and is calculated using the given year's prices. Now, this leads to an obvious problem. If all I tell you is that nominal GDP rose, you don't know why it rose. It could be that the economy produced more stuff, or it could be that prices went up, or it might be a little bit of each. Since the purpose of GDP is to measure the value of goods produced in an economy, the fact that nominal GDP can be distorted by inflation means that it isn't very useful to economists. So this is where real GDP comes into play. Real GDP measures how much is being produced and is calculated using the prices of a base year. This way, it controls for the changes in price by ignoring them. As a result, we can be sure that any increase in real GDP can only have been caused by an increase in aggregate output since we're calculating it using constant prices. Let's go through this table to see how this works. Let's start with nominal GDP, which is super easy. Just use the given year prices and quantities. Starting with 2022, 10 times 10 equals $100, plus 5 times 40, which equals $200. Add those together, and nominal GDP is $300. And we do that for each year. Pause the video to calculate the nominal GDP for 2023 and 24 if you want. Okay, so that's nominal GDP. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. For real GDP, remember our goal is to only measure output changes and to control for price level. So no matter what year we're in, we're going to use the base year prices, in this case, 2022. 
So in 2022, real GDP will be the same as nominal GDP because we're in the base year. In 2023, we do $10 times 10 equals $100, then $5 times 50, which equals 250. Add those together and real GDP equals $350. Do it again for 2024, $10 times 15 and $5 times 40 equals $350. Notice how different the picture painted by real and nominal GDP is. Nominal GDP rose each year and pretty significantly in 2024, but real GDP shows us that nominal growth was an illusion. It was all caused by an increase in prices. Real GDP didn't actually increase at all in 2024. There's another thing we can add here now called the GDP deflator. The GDP deflator is a way to calculate inflation. I know I could have showed this to you before in the inflation video, but I feel like it fits better here. The calculation is really straightforward. Nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100. In 2022, it equals 100, which just like the CPI is not a coincidence. In the base year, the GDP deflator will always be 100 because real GDP equals nominal GDP. In 2023, it's 380 divided by 350 times 100, which equals 109. And in 2024, 550 divided by 350 times 100 equals 157. Now, a good thing about using the GDP deflator to measure inflation is that it avoids the substitution bias that the CPI falls victim to. But on the downside, it includes government and investment spending, so it's not a very good reflection of the changes in the cost of living as felt by most people. And I just want to show you another way to calculate real and nominal GDP. Honestly, this is probably the most common way you'd see it on a test. Real GDP equals nominal GDP divided by the price level times 100. So for 2024, we do $250,000 divided by 125 equals $2,000 times 100 equals $200,000. Nominal GDP can be converted to real GDP by multiplying real GDP times the price level and dividing by 100. So $100,000 times 150 divided by 100 equals $150,000. All right, well, I think that's everything you need to know in this one. One more video in this unit to go. So until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you're doing these practice questions on the screen right now. They will help so much, I promise. Check out the description for links to get the answers to these questions. And I will see you in the next video.